good evening. Oh, my voice there. Oh, <laughs> hi. Um, how are you? It's so good to have you back with us on Everyday Living with me, Simone and Dave. Hello, Simone. <laughs> wow. We've got something going on with our voices. It's not the microphones. Well, it's good to be back with you. Yeah. And we've got a great show lined up tonight. We want to hear testimonies tonight. Ooh. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. And uh, how are you? Oh, you're anchoring, so you ask me how uh, yeah, I am. You, see, you ask me. Yeah, sorry, I was getting carried away. I think carried away. Exactly. Yeah. Tonight, Dave is, um, <laughs> he's actually in charge of the emails. Let's see how well he does. And um, <laughs> a challenge. Yes, that is a challenge. Right. So please, we really want you to write in, because this is like a part two. So yeah. this is like a testimony um, it was a bit like a sandwich. So we had testimonies um, when Jackie was on the program a couple of weeks ago, myself and Jackie. And then we had um, God is in control last week, yeah. which he still is this week, yes. which is a relief <laughs> that everyone should know. And then we've got part two of testimonies because we had such a great response from you um, with the testimonies that we just thought there's lots of more, lots more to, to come from you. And we really want to read them out. So please, um, whether it's during the last lockdown, this current lockdown, um, or any other time in your life, we really want to hear what you've got to share about what God has done, because you know what, it really encourages us yeah. um, on the program. <clears throat> so, and all the information is at the bottom of your screens, live at revelationtv.com. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you? Uh, you know when it says that, that you know you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Mm -hmm. There's something that. Uh, you know, you could debate with people about theology and all mm. kinds of stuff, and and you know, and what the how the Bible was put together, mm -hmm. but people can't argue with your testimony. And that's why the testimonies are so powerful. Yeah. It's like you know, it's like you're saying, well, you know, you know, I don't believe your wife exists, and I say, well, I do because I, I spoke with her today, and she spoke back to me, and and she's impacted my life. And so you could say, well, I don't believe God exists, but I, well. That's your that's your choice, but all, all I know is that in my life God has really helped me, and uh, so we, so really, I think because of where we are right now in in this moment in history, in our society, there seems to be a I don't know if you're picking up on this. I've been in a couple of supermarkets this week uh, here in Spain and speaking to people in the UK. There just seems to be a real heaviness yeah. around at the moment. It seems to be people yeah. are down, people are easy, easily getting irritable and. Mm -hmm niggly with people i think mm. that's a hebrew word um no sorry um and i think th that people need hope and yeah. so when we hear testimonies tonight yeah and when we speak to uh, your friend in a moment pastor mm -hmm. peter mm -hmm. um i believe that those testimonies are going to bring hope and Absolutely. ignite hope in people so yeah yeah Amen. let's go for it yeah well that's that i mean i think you just said a key word there is you know, is hope. And I, I just know for me that I get so encouraged by people's testimonies. Mm. You know, I love watching people's <coughs> testimonies and, and just hearing them. I love hearing people's stories. And the more we start to talk about the Lord, yeah. you, you know, I don't know if you've been in situations where you may have been a bit tired, but then as soon as you're talking with someone about the Lord, this, this strength and this energy just comes and you're like, you're wide awake because you're getting stirred up, yeah. you're getting fed. And, you know, it's so beautiful. And I think sometimes... I mean, I remember when I was at, at church, when I first got saved um, and gave my life to the Lord, the particular church that I was at, they used to have testimonies in their service. And let us know if you have testimonies actually within the service of your church regularly. So the church I went to did. Yeah, that's the thing. We, we started doing that in the church and then we got out of the habit of doing yeah. it. And really, we need to get back into the yeah. habit of doing it. it, is, yeah. it and it is so powerful. So, in, so that's one of the things that... that they did actually do within the um, the church that I went to. Yeah. Um, that there was a part in the service that was like, okay, has anybody got a testimony? Yeah. And uh, sometimes it was called popcorn testimonies, um, not because we all um, <laughs> made popping noises like popcorn. Some people did. No, but um, because it was meant to be short, you know, short and 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 like that popping. Yeah, like pop like box pops type thing. Well, I'm not going oh, that okay. far. <laughs> sorry. You see what happens? Getting carried yeah. away. I'm so, sorry. I'm um, sorry. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, you'd have popcorn testimonies or you would you just make room for yeah. people to say what the Lord has done. And, and it's amazing because sometimes w when we don't talk about this enough, we, we kind of forget or we, we don't realize how much God is in the detail yeah. stuff. So we, we can just think, oh, is it really that important? But actually, 
we really do need to share it because that is how we do encourage one another. Yeah. So make room for testimonies. Yeah, we used to have a, what's called a roving mic. So one of the pastors would go around with a radio mic. I'm showing you. Look. It was like, the mic was that size, walking around. Uh, or is that a clarinet? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then during this thing, as people were giving a testimony, the pastor would play the clarinet next to them. It's brilliant. Well, no. Um, and so they would go around and just and and sometimes people would say uh, stuff like, "Well, I don't know if this is really a testimony or not, but." this happened and like we're all like wow <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like, yes it is a testimony <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or the fact that i've just i got healed or my doctor's appointment came in when i wasn't expecting it to it came in earlier than it should have done mm -hmm. um yeah. and uh, loads of things like that so yeah. uh, i think we're always surprised by it so we would love to hear your testimony tonight it might just be and let's actually please help it to be just a, a few sentences uh, <laughs> yeah. on an email um and we can share that and pass it on to others uh, tonight as well and let them let, let our viewers get some hope at the moment because uh, i just think uh we all know the scriptures we all know it but mm -hmm. when we hear of what god is doing in other people's lives that's, that's just right. so encouraging in fact sometimes if i'm listening to testimonies late at night <laughs> i have to turn them off because i start getting too excited and end up being up till two or three o'clock in the morning <laughs> so uh yeah, so we'd love to hear some testimonies. Do email in and let us yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I, I'd actually, just as you're saying that um, just there, I just want to share um, a testimony about my, my gran. My gran's 85 and oh. she's absolutely amazing. Yeah. And she, the Lord has healed her many times, but her journey of faith, she, she believed in, in God, but she never had that personal relationship. And basically she was at the Royal Marsden Hospital and she was in her 40s and she'd had a mastectomy. Yeah. And so she was meant to have some more treatment. So she was there. And I remember visiting her when I was about nine, I was about nine or 10 when this was going on. And you're not really sure exactly. You just know, you know, your nan's in hospital. Yeah. Um, so I remember visiting her. Um, but she said that one of the nurses actually asked to pray with her. Now, I'm not sure if you're, you're allowed to do that now. Um, I would. But anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm not sorry. But anyway, so this nurse, yeah. you know, and you'd, you'd have, a, I think, a Bible in the drawer. Gideon's, that, a Gide a Gideon's yeah. Bible. So, but I think this, yeah, this nurse actually gave my nan a Bible yeah. and said, so would you like to have this? And then my nan said yes. And so she was, she was reading and the Lord started to really minister to her through, you know, she's just there in the hospital by herself most of the time. And... So the nurse prayed with her and yeah. then my nan said that she just, and it was a miraculous healing. She just said that she felt this, um, it was like electricity went through her body. She mm. said it was from the crown of her head and went all the way through her body and out through her foot. She wow. said out through her toe. Yeah. That's, this is, was her description. And she, then she just said, um, then she just felt like she wanted to go to the toilet, yeah. <laughs> which sounds very strange, but this is true. And she went to the toilet and she really went to the toilet. And basically it's like whatever was in there just all got flushed yeah. out. It's like God Quite used literally. that that way, yeah. literally. Yeah. And so she didn't think too much of that. However, when she went to go and um, they were going to give her another scan because they had more, more um, to do with more her operation. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. So they scanned her and they couldn't find um, any more traces of cancer. Praise it completely God. gone. And they got more, so more um, staff came in because they were in disbelief. Like, hold on, we've just, you know, we scanned her the other day and we know there's something else to operate on. And now there's nothing there. So about yeah. five people came in the room because they're just looking at the screen, you, you know, yeah. just like what's going on. And so that her surgeon, um, actually said, this is not the work of men. This is this is the work of God Amen. because we cannot <laughs> explain this. Um, yeah. There's there's nothing else there. And so and he went on to be um, the the queen surgeon. Oh wow! So he gave he actually you know gave glory to God. He yeah. you know he didn't take the credit. So, you're, so God gave your nun the future queen surgeon. There you go. So. Look at that. And from that, then she actually yeah. um, got baptized after that. Fantastic. And really, you know, she I want to meet dedicated. your nun. Oh, my nan's lovely. She's lovely. Can Millie. I meet her? Yeah, you, you, you could meet her. She's probably watching. Hi, nan. Hi, nan. Hi, um, nan. <laughs> so I hope that encourages you because, I mean, that always encourages me. That has been like 
such a bedrock of my nan's faith and, and her journey of faith and walking with God that that she made that transition of, yes, she believed, yeah. but then she's like, you know what, Th this God that I believe or know of has now come close yeah. into my life into to exactly where I need him. And everywhere she goes, she testifies. She's not, you know, when she's on the bus, when she's in the cab, she's like, my aunt, this is my Jamaican nan. She says, oh, I love Jesus. I love him so much. Um, and, uh, you I know, want to meet she, her. yeah, honestly, she's she just do, got so much faith. I've got a feeling she's a great cook as well. I don't know what it is. She's a great cook yeah. and she's, she's such a funny woman. Yeah. And she's so, she's so funny and jovial. Can we get a people. lot on the show? We might have, we might have to arrange something because like you'd it, love my nan. Your nan's word of the week on the show wouldn't All that right. be great we Let's might be working it. this out like working this now one. so i hope that like <clears throat> you know seriously yeah. you know in our way of being serious everybody um <laughs> but yeah but I, I really hope that that does encourage yeah, you to know that yeah. god is and and even since then um she did have cancer again and um she did have some uh, um medical treatments yeah. but god healed her again and even healed her i i think it was a year and a half ago she went to go and have another um, operation on her right and while she was at the hospital she, the lord healed her at the hospital because she couldn't see and then she started <laughs> saying i can see i can see and they were like you can't see because we're coming <laughs> to she said no i can i can see you and so again it was a, just another opportunity to to testify like yeah. you know when they checked her she could she could see formidable so it's <laughs> honestly i'm just she really is such yeah. an encouragement to well, me. Well, I want to so. meet her now, definitely. Yeah. Right, I've got an email here. Oh, yes. First, first one of the night comes from LW. Um, now, I'm intrigued as to what LW sounds for, but we'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that you swapped seating positions. I thought, what does this mean? Is Simone now wearing the trousers? But then notice Dave is also <laughs> wearing trousers. Yeah, look at that. Uh, perhaps some deeper meaning. Oh. Do, 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 do. Wow. Yeah. Oh, maybe we've got a prophetic Well, word actually, there. can I just say there is really no deeper meaning to it. It okay. is each week one of us anchors the show. Yeah. And so one of us actually chooses the, the topic. Yeah. Um, sorts out the videos and the editing and be orders all that in a week. And then whoever's doing that sits in the anchoring position, which is where Simone has come up. And uh, so there's, there probably is a deeper meaning to it, but we're just too sufi superficial to really pick up on it, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, maybe we'd pray and find out about okay. that then. So, so um, yeah. do you want some more emails or should we go to the Actually, guest? we have a guest this week, yes. And I'm sure you've all missed um, us having a guest now. I think we've been sufficient for you, but um, it's so lovely to be able to have a guest on the show, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we always like to hear what someone else is going to be able to contribute and... I'm so pleased to be able to invite um, a really good friend of mine, Pastor Peter Nimbard. Yay! <laughs> da, 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 da. Pastor Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. Thank you, Simone. Oh, lovely. We're so glad that you, can, that, that you could come on the show tonight. And we've, we've known each other for like 28 years. 28 years. Wow, but can you believe it? How old were you at the time? Well... I was 10. I, were, you, were you 20? No, I'm joking. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we've worked in ministry together, you know, um, and yeah. just love your family, your beautiful wife, Karen, say hi to her. And, um, yeah, so we met, actually, I'll tell you how we met. We met at the day of my baptism. Do you remember this? I remember this. Look at, there you go. <laughs> because it was so, it was so, it was just, so significant because obviously profound. I profound there yeah. you go so profound because obviously I'd given my life to the Lord and I was only 17 and um I'd had a bit of a battle sort of getting to get into church um and and you were there when someone had just mentioned <laughs> about um me wearing faithful, some, yeah, go on, faithful earring in your ear <laughs> so <laughs> this I'm old <laughs> Yeah, that's it. They they said I just got baptized. I was overjoyed oh, with the Lord. I remember you telling me this story. Yeah, like, yeah. No, so this is Peter. Yeah. This is Peter. Yeah. Right, so yeah. Um, yeah. So they About said that. Am I, am I going to get rid of my earrings now? I'm baptized. That's a whole other topic for another show. And as you can tell tonight. <laughs> I've made up for it. <laughs> I've put those earrings back in. Um, but, but but you were there, and it's amazing. This is the thing, isn't it? This is why you know we we need to encourage one another. Yeah. Because. 
you know, I, I was just this new, literally a new babe in the Lord. Don't know anything about church life. And I just think everyone's perfect and all the rest of it. And then, you know, you came along and just kind of deflected that and said, don't mm. worry, don't worry about that, you know. <laughs> um, and I, I, often, I often reflect on that, that if, if you, you, you know, God didn't put you there to, to, to encourage me and, and take my mind away from that and deflect that, you know, would mm. that have, what it's would that have done? To you. Yeah. yeah. That could have been really good. Yeah. That's it. Oh, can we, can we, can we, can can you say that again? Because the sound is. That could have been really disgusting. Names. And we've got some real sound issues here, B.O. on that one. Um, So what we'll do is we'll come back to that in a minute, see if we can. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, there's a real echo on there. So, yeah. uh, Sorry, Peter. We'll be back with you in a minute. We'll just try and work out there because it was difficult to understand what you were saying there, wasn't it? Yeah, just getting um, into that. Yeah. uh, But. That you write about the whole, it's so easy to put somebody off. Really, when somebody first becomes a Christian, you've got to kind of nurture them, but or not protect them, but yeah. but just allow them to grow and become the Christian that yeah. God wants them to be. You know, right. quite often, you know, everybody wants to put an input into you and yeah. say, "No, you should be like this. You should be like that." <laughs> yeah. uh, but actually, just relax. So um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we get our technical people. There's a guy walking around with a screwdriver right now. So it, was, um, it looks like he knows what he's doing. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll come back to Peter in a minute. Do you want a, an email? Yes, right. please. What a hear from you um, guys. Right. This is from uh, Henrietta. Uh, Good evening, Henrietta. Lovely Uh, lovely name. Uh, My husband had a kidney transplant in May. Our God had the perfect kidney for him during COVID. Amazing. Only God could have chosen this time for such a time as this. My husband is recovering very well, and we will always be so grateful to this family. Please pray for salvation for my husband. He is a wonderful husband and father, but not yet saved. Uh, I praise the Lord for your lives. Um, Thank you, Henrietta. Um, um, yeah, let's, we just pray and trust and believe uh, yeah. that uh, God's going to, uh, as Paul prays, that the obstacles will be removed from your husband hearing mm. the message of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe even this, through this answer to prayer, that this will be part of that journey. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah. That's, so, that's so powerful. Um, OK, so we're going to try and go back to Peter. Are you there, yeah. Pastor Peter? Should we try again? We can try again. Yay! Come on now. I think we fixed it. Thank you, Bior, in the <laughs> back. Woo! Right, okay, sorry. And you said. I said, who knows? That could have really been a discouragement. It could have been uh, an opportunity for Satan to really just discourage you. But yeah. thank God that God put me there to encourage you. And look at you. You're still there. Yeah. Look at that. Hey, I'm yeah. shouting. Uh, shine for the Lord. Um, but no, it is so, and, and this is what is the great thing is that from that, you know, um, you know, God, God linked us then in ministry. And it's just so beautiful to, to some people will obviously stay closely in our journeys and some, mm. some people won't, but it's just been so nice that we didn't know from that moment that we would um, have an opportunity to encourage one another in ministry and, yeah. um, you know, be, be friends and these things and it's just so great to be able to say this this far down the line you know look what god has done yeah. from from then do you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and so um i mean there's so many testimonies that we can all share and i think one of the reasons why i wanted to have you on the program as well at this particular time is we know in the uk that that you're in a second lockdown and as dave mentioned you know at the top of the program you know, people are reacting differently and maybe discouraged. And we really want to we really want to just share um, the hope that, that God brings um, to us. And so you've got a really powerful testimony of what happened in the first lockdown. And um, that's why I wanted to get you on just to, to say, look how good God is. And do you want to just tell us a bit about that and um, what what God is doing in, in your life and in your church? And there's just just. Just, yeah, tell us. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, um, Simone, because someone said to me the other day, I think it was my daughter, actually, she says, have you noticed that? They give you all the numbers of the amount of people that's had co- got COVID, how many people have died, but they never yeah. tell you how many people have recovered from it. Yeah, you know? exactly. 
so which is the testimony and i am one of them yes yeah. that's interesting okay. peter you say that because uh so i heard somebody else say exactly the same thing here in spain they do are giving the numbers up of those who have uh, made it through and, and have recovered um and yet in the, i'm not sure how much i think it's around a million you might be able to correct me i think it's around a million people in the uk have actually uh have had it you know that they've tested so far so um yeah so to tell, i wonder whether we well, want to hear the story now don't we yeah, but come on what happened yeah that's what my daughter said today she said other countries they report how many people's recovered yeah. in, Great in england they don't so in second of uh, i went to barbados in march and then around about the end of march i started to experience the coffin and then that coffin turned into a very bad fever the worst fever i've ever had in my life to the point of one night my wife had to change me at least three times of just soaking wet wow um, and it just got really really bad and I, I think i mean i one of my other pastors had had it and recovered so i just thought you know i'll just lie it off and i'll be like him i'll recover um and then another one of brothers from my church had it and recovered so i thought i'd be like that you know just sleep it off it's a flu and it will go but uh just it got worse and worse to the point where i just couldn't breathe um and i was struggling to breathe and i've never you know it was just really terrible mm. So at that stage, I thought, like, I had a couple of friends. I passed a friend of mine, Mike Vickers, and another friend of mine, Ricky, um, and another pastor friend of mine, actually, Steve Fishpool from Horsham. Both of them, like, all three of them saying, P, call the, go to the hospital, go to the hospital. But, you know, I was trying to just, thinking yeah. it was going to pass after a few days. and um, That's a man's response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually, I, you know, I called my, my children and my wife into the bedroom and I said to them, look, I could stay here and try and fight this thing off or I could go into hospital. If I go into hospital, I'm not sure you're not going to see me and I don't know what's going to happen. You know, you may see me again. You're not going to be able to visit me. And my daughter, my second daughter, she came up with this illustration. She said, like, if you had a mobile phone that has a problem with it, you take if you don't take it and get repaired, then the the, the problem gets so bad that it becomes irreparable. Mm. And with that, she got on the phone and phoned the ambulance. And the ambulance came, they test me, checked me, etc. Test my oxygen level and said you need to get to the hospital. Yeah. And so second, I was taken to Bazardon Hospital and put on a COVID ward. They gave me the tests and stuff. The first test didn't work and then so I ended up in the hospital for, I think, 11 days I was in um, hospital, um, placed on a small breathing thing, just a small one up in my nose, and then they put me on another one, and then I was on the big one strapped around my head. It's really struggling to breathe. Um, I couldn't, I wasn't sleeping right, couldn't eat, couldn't taste food. Um, it was a real a combination of so many things. I mean, I've never taken sleeping tablets in my life, but because I just couldn't sleep anymore, that they were, had to give me sleeping tablets, which wasn't really working, and I was hallucinating. I just, I can't even tell you what I was hallucinating, but it was just really all sorts of stuff. Peter, my kidneys. So, sorry, yeah, I was gonna, did you ever feel that this might be it? You know, that oh, I'll get to that. There, there came a stage. Um, I've actually done a video that's on the YouTube. Um, mm. You can find it on the Art for You um, YouTube site. But uh, I've done a. It's a five-minute video of it, and it shows me on the respirator, basically, just, you know, praying for my life because I, there was a stage where I phone. I must have texted one of my friends. Just, um, just said to him like. I need to get some things in order. Like I was thinking about what happens if something happens to me, what's going to happen to my wife, you know, um, then what's going to happen with the church? Like, <laughs> are they going to know he's going to take over? All these things are going in my head. And um, 
he, he encouraged me, a couple of them encouraged me, sent me some messages of encouragement. Couldn't really speak properly because I wasn't breathing right. Mm. So, uh, yeah, just I had to keep talking about my faith and mm. encouraging myself in the Lord and speaking to myself, saying I'm not going to die, but I'm going to live and declare the glory of God. Just kept having to say these things to myself and just try and see an outcome because... Yeah, whilst being on the road, I saw a couple of people getting taken away. Mm. And I think it was when I was in hospital at the same time as Boris um, Johnson, our Prime Minister. Mm. And I remember hearing that he had come out of hospital. And I was like, I was like this is like you're bargaining with God. I'm like, God, if you've let him out of the hospital, you've got to get me out of there. I'm more important than yeah. Boris. Yeah. I know he's doing the country, but I'm the king. I'm representing your kingdom, God. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so um, yeah, I had you know what it was. Um, at first, the, the messages that were going out was I don't know maybe they were trying to protect me, but it was a, not very clear. Wow. And then a message then did go out online that I was really in a critical way to pray. I remember from getting it. And I, I all over. getting it and the yeah. message, and yeah. I'm like. <laughs> no way, nah, nah, not not my brother. Like, well, I think you sent it to me actually as well. Did yeah, you get I, I praying, mean, I, yeah, yeah I'm, I think that I sent it yeah. out to lots of people as well. But I remember getting that and just like, yeah. Sorry, Peter, what what's your view on uh, people that say, and I've heard even Christians say this. Well, I'm not going to get it. God's going to protect me. Um, how does that make you feel? Because I've I've got a, a I'm an Elim pastor, and another Elim pastor up in the north of England uh, died from it. Uh, you know, great man of God, mm -hmm. it's gone. You know, uh, and 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 obviously you were praying for a breakthrough there. How do you kind of square that up when people you know people say I've not heard of anybody that's actually had COVID now? Almost like it's a conspiracy theory. Uh, and even if it isn't, then well, God's going to protect me from it anyway. And I believe you know I believe on I stand on that word. Yet there are. But, you know, you get it and, you know, God, God helps you in the middle of it. Yeah, what's interesting, Dave, is like a lot of people say to me, I mean, a lot of people say, Pete, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even believe this thing is real. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> like they, 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 they believe it's a conspiracy, but they say, you're the only reason what gives me a little doubt that, <laughs> that actually this thing must exist, you know? Mm. So I don't know why me i i you know like i always said to people before um you know people were quoting psalms 91 um yeah. before like these things weren't coming but I said, how many people before covid died of cancer died of mm. all other things mm. I mean, so what's the difference so yeah. yeah um that's the way my looking of it was i survived before um a heart attack in fact in february i was in hospital had to have an art operation. I've survived that. Well, so, I didn't know that. Me, um, God, God is good. I don't know why He allows certain things. Mm. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm not one of them people that bothers myself with asking a lot of whys. Yeah. Right. I just trust the sovereignty of God that, you know, I'm in His hands. I've never, I don't doubt. He's never doubted that He was with me in the hospital. Um, I did doubt at one time whether I was going to make it, mm. you know, but never doubted God's ability to heal me, never doubted God's ability, that he, whether he was with me or not, never questioned mm. his sovereignty in any way. But yeah, I think I was saying, like, I believe that God just had people all over the world, I mean, all over the world that yeah. were praying for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I believe that's why I am sitting here speaking to this camera, speaking yeah. to all of you as a revelation, wherever they are, just to say like prayer, the prayers of God's people yeah. made a difference. And I really think it's important. I mean, there's a, there's a little part in this where my family, they weren't really putting out full message of my condition because I don't know, maybe thinking about privacy etc and then i remember yeah. saying to them no let people know and i think sometimes yeah. people don't share what they're going through so people mm. can't pray yes effectively sometimes you will hear that 
someone's got cancer, but it's when they're just on their dying bed that yeah. you hear it. Kept it back, you know, and shared it. So I just encourage the viewers, like, if you're going through stuff, just get people praying for you. The sexual prayer of the righteous people, they Amen. avail much. Believe that. Hallelujah. True prayer. Um, God save me. You know what? One of the things that God did um, while I was in hospital, I had some terrible nurses. And, I mean, the NHS, I thank the NHS and thank God for the hospital, etc. But there was one particular nurse, her name was Nurse Vardy, and I really want to see this because I believe that she was like an angel that God sent because she just looked after me took care of me wow. she explained everything I'm, I'm one of them explanation she explained what was happening mm, she explained mm. oxygen levels what i needed it to get to mm. she fed me one time because i wasn't eating properly mm. she fed me she spoke wow. with me i just awesome. believe like god just used this nurse to minister mm. to me yeah, yeah. A great testimony on this. I went back to Bazardon Hospital to film my five documentary and story of my battle with COVID. Yeah. When we got there, um, the security came and says, you can't do this. Who told you you can do this? <laughs> they said, you can't film outside the hospital. You can't do this. They said, you have to have permission. So we said, well, oh, I didn't know. And she said, well, yes, you need permission. But we've been really nice. And she said, so I said, who do you need permission? She said, you need from the comms, from the comms. I said, okay, sorry, I really did. And then I placed just like the spirit of the Lord went on. She got on the phone for about 10 minutes, kept trying to get a hold of the comms. Finally, she got a hold of them. They came out, said, what are you doing? I said, we're filming the story because God healed me in this hospital on Sunday for healing. They said, oh, fine, go ahead, one condition. You allow us to print this in our NHS magazine. I said, that's fine. So, talked at the end, turned out she was a born again Christian. They put it in the magazine, the Farrakh magazine went all over Essex. Then I got a call about a month later from, I think it was the NHS of the whole of the county of Essex and said that they want to put it out on their site and in their magazine and they want to use the story. So ain't God good, God took oh the testimony and spread it, you know, all over it. Oh, fantastic. Hallelujah. Woo! What an awesome story, it really is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I came out of hospital. Yeah. Came out of hospital on the, um, on the 14th of April, the one day before my wedding anniversary. Available. Look at that. Yeah. And that is one of the things that I love. I mean, I wish that we had more time. We'll have to have you Thank back you, again, Peter. possibly. But Thanks that is one in. of the, the, the yeah. you know, when I Just saw awesome. that actually, you know, um, coming through that you that it, you were able to be out for your wedding anniversary i was just i mean i was just really crying and everything <laughs> i was mashed up um and you know i'm just really thanking god that that you could be you know with us tonight and just to be able to share this and um i think we need we, to get we, back yes, on again we're, we're going to get yeah. you back on we have yeah. to say goodbye now but take care lots of love to the family thank you peter and, um, people can find you at you. a radical church Ark, yeah. The Ark, yeah. yeah, a radical church. We're Thank definitely... you so much, and we'll see you again. Bless, bless. you guys. That's really built me up. Thank you, Peter. That's... Woo! I know. Oh, got, guys, what, what? Talking about, I've got some emails. I've got loads of emails. Okay, so. well, this is it. Yeah, right, Come on now. Shall I go for it? Yeah. Uh, What's well, great to have Peter on, really well. Thanks, yeah. Peter, for that. That's Okay, let's go to this next one then. Um, please pray for my family. A family member needs a lot of wisdom and protection and favour at this time. Um, don't know you, Don't get a name there, but you know what? God knows the situation, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So... Um, Good evening, guys. Apologies if it doesn't fall into your topic for tonight. I really just want to say uh, this to Simone about God Day today. Ooh. Oh. Uh, your story, the scripture about Hagar. Is that, yeah, that's Hagar, how you say yeah, it. Yeah, Hagar, just checking because yeah. uh, some people say it differently. Yeah. Uh, the revelation and the songs really uh, touched me and brought uh, tears to my eyes. Oh. I just thank the Lord for leading me to listen to it. 
I will uh, keep going back to it. I am comforted because God sees me and knows exactly what I'm going through. God bless Revelation TV. That's from Bridget. Oh, yeah. thank you, Bridget. It's funny because oh, when Simone you. sings, I, I get a bit teary. Oh. She brings tears to my eyes as well. Uh, right, Kevin McNally. Uh, hi, I used to be a homeless alcoholic drug addict. Uh, lost everything in life, family, house, job, health. Could not stop drinking alcohol. I craved death for years and out of hospital and police cells. Hated every bit of life. Wow. Uh, had terror every day. And then one night I was about to kill myself. I could not go on and I was about to do it. In my last breath, I asked this question out of my desperation. I said, God, if you are real, help me. I'm in that moment, an amazing peace came upon me. Now, 20 years later, born again, lover of Jesus, restoration has happened. Amazing now with Jesus. Uh, first, then all goes well. Call on Jesus and be loved beyond anything you will experience in your life. Happy days. That's from Kev. What an amazing story. Amen. I've got another... Do you want me to keep going, you, Simone? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, let's keep absolutely. going. Let's keep yeah. it going. Keep this train uh, going. Dear Dave and Simone, as a 12-year-old boy, I was distressed when my parents were fighting before splitting up. I was driven so, uh, somehow to save up for a Bible, which I brought, uh, so I bought and hid to read secretly. Uh, that's oh, my no. sisters laughed at me. I got great comfort from reading it. It led me joining Scripture Union and to grow in my faith. That was some 60 years ago. Uh, when Simone was just a wee lass and the good Lord has sustained me through many trials and pits. Bless you. That's from Duncan. I think that's Duncan in Inverness. Inverness. Is that you, Duncan? It from must Inverness? be, yeah. Just yeah. let us know if it's you. Right. In a nutshell, I've been an alcoholic uh, and a drug user for 20 years. I suffered o OCD and self-harmed. I tried everything to break free, including medication, counselling, cognitive behaviour, therapy. Get my teeth in. Oh, yep. uh, and uh, but nothing worked eventually i turned to jesus as a last resort uh, through a leaflet i saw as a christian counselor at my gp mm. practice you just don't know where leaflets end up what a great yeah. thing they are sometimes <laughs> you know um, i felt a change but must admit i still struggled with addiction however my baptism three and a half years later i was completely set free i came out of the water i knew i knew it had gone then also went back to the university and gained a degree in law good Amen. on you I gotta say that when I became a Christian, I didn't go back to do any universities. <laughs> to, I still got GCSEs. That, uh, I, I got a whole load of A's in my GCSEs, and I thought I'm doing really well here. It apparently meant absent. Um, right. Um, oh yeah. So thank you. To, uh, I also then went back to university, got a degree, post postgraduate diploma in law, and masters in law too. I have now been clean for seven years. I have a fantastic job with cancer patients. Uh, people, Jesus is alive. He is real. Amen. Blessings. That's from Satinda. Thank you, Satinda, Thank you, Satinda. for that Thank one. You. I've got another four here. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, keep going. It. Yeah. Let's go um, hello, my daughter Freya suffered from a brain tumor seven years ago, and tomorrow she goes back under the knife for a failed uh, shunt. Her second operation in a week, as a first attempt, caused bleed uh, to bleed on the brain. Please send a prayer for healing and safety. My wife Melanie is currently at her bedside. Pray for all, yeah. Pray yeah. for her strength during this also. Gordon, we will pray after this TV show ends. Mm. Um, do take our word on that. Um, after 20 years of pain, a situation where I lived, I contacted my doctor. She changed my medication. After a lot of prayer over the years, two weeks later, the nerve pain was resolved. I am thankful and amazed, and I can sleep and spend more time in prayer, and I'm, ab and I'm able to enjoy each day. Stephanie, l enjoying everyday life, yeah, <laughs> living every day. Uh, this is from Anita. Evening, Simone and Dave. It brightens our day to see you both. We will send you that money in the post, Anita. Uh, we love you, wonderful people. It's my mum's, Mary's birthday today, but we haven't had the best day. We are praying and trusting in our God. Simone. Sing happy birthday to her, come on. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Come happy on now. Happy birthday. Thank Woo! you. God bless you. So you don't get that on God. No, I can't say that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, God, <laughs> God's love. God is always there for us. He's the reason I'm still here. I've had so many illnesses to death. I have come near, but God has always healed me. Wow. He never left my side. He has held my hand throughout. In his love, I did abide. I've been so very broken, anxious and at sea, but no matter what I needed, God never forsook me. Thank you, Anita, for that lovely... It's coming in thick and fast. Come on, come on, Hello, guys. Simone and Dave. I gave my life to Jesus when I was six 
16. My dad wasn't interested, but he asked me what I liked for my birthday, and I asked him to come with me and my mum to my little Pentecostal service. <laughs> I love that. After refusing, he went after some weeks, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Wow. <laughs> There's no getting away. He was changed, man. Praise our lovely Lord Jesus. Amen. I am now 86. <gasps> wow. wow. And that's from Margaret. Margaret, oh, good on you. you. Still Jesus. going strong. Amen. Bless you. Um, right. Um, this is a very long one, so I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can. Okay. Uh, nearly 20 years ago, I was left by my husband, 10 years to raise my two daughters, aged two and eight years of age, whom I had to raise myself. I was not born again Christian at the time. I was devastated as a result, but God put the right people around me and a support system, including family, people from church that I was getting to know at the time. To cut a long story short, I became a committed Christian, raised both my daughters in church and developed a very close relationship with God. In the midst of everything, it was difficult, but amazing journey, working with God, growing as a Christian and adjusting to new life of raising my children myself. Myself, daughters, uh, how, however, being richly blessed through it all. Through every, everything, I discovered that my calling was to become a counsellor. Yeah. I've just completed my degree in counselling. This is, oh, this is Come wonderful. On. Come on, Thank I want more of this. Jesus, Come on, yeah. let's do another hour, Bior. Uh, God bless me with, uh, no, sorry, got a great program coming up next. Uh, God bless me with uh, own thriving private practice. Majority of clients I work with are Christians who prefer to see Christian counsellor. Uh, my older daughter, now 28 years, graduated finished her education a few years ago with postgraduate and God blessed her with successful business. My younger daughter, who is 22, is now, I'm rushing this, sorry, my younger daughter, who is now 22, in her final year of university and is also doing well. I tried to condense what has been a long journey, thanks for that. Um, God's abundant blessings to you all at Revelation TV. Your channel has been a great blessing to me. That's from Bukola, or Bukola, oh. I hope I said your name right. Three, have we got time to get three more yes, in? Uh, these are a bit quicker. I want God to remember me at a time of the 11th hour of the 11th month to recover my money. I invest in a business and up until now, both the profit and the capital are gone. My children to come back to uh, me, restoration. I was talking to somebody, thank you, that's Ernest. I was talking to somebody this week uh, who's got a very similar situation. I actually met with him here in Spain. And uh, just to say, if you catch the thief stealing, he has to bring it back sevenfold. Uh, pro Proverbs reminds yes. us. Amen. Good evening. I just want to say that our guest was uh, your guest was lovely. You should give him more airtime. God bless Zane. Thank you. Yeah, we will Absolutely. try and get him back on. Yes, we, w we yeah. really want to get Pastor Peter back on and we will give him more airtime. So thank you for that confirmation. Um, final one here, I think, uh, this is from Brian. Peter said he doesn't know why he got the virus. Well, after the revelation of the story going all over Essex, I think that's answered the questions. Keep up the good work. Yes. God bless you both, Amen. Brian. Because God has a way, doesn't he? Yeah of yeah. turning situations yeah. around Simone. And, and you know what, sorry, even just when, when Pastor Pete was just, you know, just sharing his story, what, one of the things that stood out to me is that when the people were saying, you can't film here or whatever, he just said, but we just, we just loved them. Yeah. You know, we just, they, he didn't respond. You know, whoever his team was didn't start getting into a fight with them saying, well, we were a bit... Right, yeah. because that, you know, even that as a yeah. witness, that's what even stood out to me with just that part of the story, which was not the main part of the story, but just, you know, doing things in the right spirit, how that just then, you know, yeah. opened a door for the next part absolutely. of God to send the right people. And absolutely, obviously, God wants to save Essex and... Um, I'm sure that they've been praying. And the only way is Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Not yeah, the yeah, only way yeah. is that six. <laughs> Sorry, go. I'm getting you can that use one. It, no, you can use that. You can use that, Pastor Peter. Uh, the only way is Jesus <laughs> yeah. in Essex. There you go. Oh, you can, dear yeah. me. That's great. Yeah. But that's one of your better ones anyway. Thank you. Yeah. But, um, I do try. No, I just think it's amazing. I mean, when I, when I actually met Pastor to Peter, yeah, he'd been pastoring for 28 years, but pastoring the Ark for 23. And I remember when he started um, the Ark, a radical church, um and so it's so great to see that it's one church but seven locations yeah. you know and yeah. it was just one location at that time and um did many baptisms at his, at his church um and it's so we will get him back absolutely and it's just see that's the thing you know you can just feel yeah. that you feel it stirring and turning within us when we start talking about the goodness of the lord and for me tonight i'm just so encouraged just to be reminded of what God does and um, to hear other people's, yeah. you know, testimonies. And we all need it, don't we? At the moment, it's just, 
you know, I, I'm, I don't, I'm getting to the point now where I'm thinking next year I don't want any more politicians on my TV screen. Because <laughs> right? every time I turn on the news, no, no, nothing, we pray for them, don't get me wrong, I was just joking yeah. a little bit there. But, um, you know, you turn the news on, it's just so heavy. I know we've had some good news about whatever vaccines coming in, but it's just, yeah. So for me, I need this. I yeah. need, I need yeah. to hear these testimonies yeah. and I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. So uh, keep them coming and Absolutely. any that come in, We'll, uh, is we'll any get more email? no. One that's it for now. But if any more come in, we will uh, pass them on to us, and then uh, Revelation TV will pass them on to us during the week as well. Absolutely. So we can read them out later on. Absolutely. And you know, just want to just yeah, again, just and we are gonna we're we're gonna be handing over to Voice in the Wilderness yeah. afterwards, and so please stay for that because they're live. I know you're gonna have a great time with them. They are awesome, program. aren't they? They are great. Yeah, I, wa I watched it last week. Ooh, I got home and watched Voice in the Wilderness last week. I just loved it. Loved it. it was just, they were just sharing great stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, that is what, that, that is so what we, keep it, yeah. we, that is what we want. And we just want to be able to, you know, be really real and relevant on Revelation TV. Yeah. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> the three R's. Not reading, rhythmic and... See, yeah, anyway. uh, right. see, yeah, yeah. You see, because I've just got that. Um, yeah. So we, we, that's what we want to be. We want to be authentic. We want to be real. And we just, I just want to say thank you. We want to say thank yeah. you for, again, just writing in. We, we, we love interacting with you. It wouldn't be the same if you didn't do that um, on any of the shows. And um, we really appreciate your time and just to hear from you. Um, and we hope that you feel stirred tonight. We hope that you've heard something that's really touched you and made you think, wow, God is really good. Um, so we, we can't do any more emails oh, right now, but we just want to say thank you so much and stay tuned for Voice in the Wilderness and we will see you by God's grace next week again on Everyday Living. So thank you so much. Lots of love. God bless. Keep up.